Welcome to my last evening prayers um, for this series. Uh, we're here on Saturday, the 9th of December. Let's pray. Lord, there are those strange passages in the Gospels that I, I don't fully understand. I'm not sure a lot of people fully understand, but of separation. You know, one shall be taken, one shall be left. Um, this kind of rapture moment where the suddenness of change falls upon um, communities and and whether that was uh, about something that happened then or will still happen um, is i guess for the theologians to decide but we need always to be ready especially in this time when things happen suddenly we think about that awful attack uh, um, against the Israeli people on that one Saturday that sparked all this horrendous conflict. Things that were already in the history but happened on one day to spark it. And all we know that things are so uncertain. And so we lord have to live a provisional life with you we just don't know what the future holds but we do know who holds the future and it's in that we have to stand and be firm so we don't know the day nor the hour but we know you're coming we don't know all the ways it will all work through but we know you are trustworthy we know nothing can separate us from your love we know that you are a god on whom we can stand like a rock help us in these times of change in these times that will get increasingly dark i believe that we may remain faithful to you and look to you not knowing the day nor the hour you could come by Christmas Day, uh, that we want to live those lives in which we close our curtains like the hymn writer Horatius Bonner used to do and says, perhaps tonight, Lord. So we thank you for this time of Advent, which is a, a wake up call when we might just be focusing on buying presents. Help us to live in the real light of your coming love. And fill us again tonight with your Holy Spirit, that we might listen to your voice. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, we're going to turn now to 1 Thessalonians 3 and the first five verses. 1 Thessalonians 3 Finally, when we could stand it no longer, we decided to stay alone in Athens, and we sent Timothy to visit you. He is our brother and God's co-worker in proclaiming the good news of Christ. We sent him to strengthen you, to encourage you in your faith, and to keep you from being shaken by the troubles you were going through. But you know that we are destined for such troubles. Even while we were with you, we warned you that troubles would soon come, and they did as you well know. That is why, when I could bear it no longer, I sent Timothy to find out whether your faith was still strong. I was afraid that the tempter had gotten the best of you and that our work had been useless. Uh, when I was a teenager, a young adolescent, and uh, on my bedroom wall had all these sort of posters, <laughs> and one of them uh, had this little man sort of looking in the, in the in the corner of the picture sort of over your shoulder like that little blue figure and uh, it said just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you <laughs> that's the kind of poster out of my wall anyway as well as darth vader um we, and lindsay wagner let's not forget her uh, we we talk of people having a persecution complex, don't we? Yeah, or they could just be being persecuted. You just don't know, do you? Um, now, in, in this reading here, it says 
in verse 4. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that you would be persecuted. Sorry to finish on a downer for this week of evening prayers, but we do need to keep that in mind. Uh, we, uh, some years back, we had that lady who got in trouble, didn't she, for wearing a cross. She worked for British Airways, didn't she? And uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury kind of defended her. Or something, and we were sort of, you know, go, <laughs> go get a Archbishop. And... Uh, but in a way, my my feeling about that case and many since is, well, what do you expect? Actually, what do you expect? If you dare to show, expect what Jesus got. Why do we think, because I think we've had such an easy ride in the West anyway, up to now, we sort of expect that the, the, the thing is Jesus can be persecuted you know and and vilified when he's in in uh, nazareth and and you know jerusalem and elsewhere but we won't you know it, it was good for him but it's not good for us <laughs> the gospel is counter cultural i'm noticing how many people are using that word cancelled nowadays i was watching graham linehan who's uh, one of my favorite comedy writers on youtube uh, who had such a bad turn because he had an opinion about certain matters of society. You know, he's not a Christian as far as I know. Uh, and I think, wowee. <laughs> and do you think the Christians are going to, um, uh, unless they keep their heads right below the parapet, uh, aren't, aren't going to suffer the same persecution as their Lord? So be ready is action number six. Sorry about this action, but I think we need to be. Be ready for jesus coming and be ready for what he endured i think that is if the time is short we can expect not an easy ride sorry about that okay <laughs> let's uh let's pray father we often pray and we should pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who very very obviously receive persecution of a high order where their their lives are in danger their their status is in in jeopardy um uh, their their measures are taken against them that mean they can't succeed in society or life because they say i have a higher allegiance than this state or the religion of the place or whatever And we feel for them and we pray for them and we ask, Lord, that they will be released from these situations. But we cannot but know in our hearts that when Paul spoke up, he was persecuted. When Jesus spoke of the kingdom, finally, they put him on the cross. And so, Lord, just make our hearts ready. Help us to be awake. Help us to be bold and to speak for you, not in ways just to be argumentative, but in ways that speak of the truth. And just help us to be prepared for the response. Lord Jesus, come and strengthen your church, enliven and embolden your people to speak your message. And we ask these things now for the sake of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So that's it for me. Uh, I don't know who's on next week. <laughs> Somebody will be. Um, uh, for now, we're going to finish with, uh, uh, it's been quite a Kendrick week this week, hasn't it, really? Um, I'm going to finish with uh, one we don't sing hardly ever now, uh, but it's based on parts of the epistle. I think Peter, it's the epistle this is. And it says, wake up, O sleeper and rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you and warns us in the song about the time that is short and the times we are in 
So let's finish with this and I'll see you around the circuit and uh, online again uh, soon. Wake up, O oh sleeper. Take care.